Hello and thank you for joining me. This is Sierra from Sierra T Designs and today I have a video for you on the Scrapbook Pal YouTube channel. So let's jump right in. So when I make a card I like to start by cutting down my cardstock. I have a full sheet of cardstock here and I'm going to cut off four inches. That will give me seven by eight and a half which is my preferred measurement for a slimline card. So I like to score it at three and a half. So my scored card is eight and a half by three and a half inches. Now there are many measurements for slimline cards. This is just my preferred size. So here I'm going to bring in my score buddy and I'm going to score it. And I score on one side and then I flip it over and score on the other. Uh, because my, my card stock's too big to fit in the, the little score buddy here. But I make it work and I don't have a problem with it. I also have a six inch trimmer as you saw so I just kind of uh, make it work for what I have in my stash. So I'm also going to bring in the Waffle Flower Slim Lacy Layers dies and I cut out the biggest and then the second largest because I wanted to kind of add some uh, I would say texture but that's not quite the right little added pizzazz maybe is the right word there uh, into the background of my card and because I'm in love with these dies <laughs> they're so pretty and there's so many of them I'm gonna have to get my hands on some more of them so I also have the Avery L peekaboo flights stamps and dies and I have the Avery L peekaboo pets stamps I don't own the dies for that set yet I'm gonna have to get my hands on them because these are freaking adorable but I stamped them out using uh, Gina K Amalgam ink because it is Copic friendly. And then you see I, can stamped, I stamped out three clouds, um, uh, the plane, and then a little pig and his hooves, or her, her hooves. And I'm going to stamp them out twice because they are brand new stamps and I need, did a better impression uh, because they are brand new. So they didn't stamp really great the first time, which is why I'm using my Misty to stamp them out. And I did want more clouds than the three that I stamped. So I just shifted those over onto uh, the door of the Misty and then I'm going to stamp them out again. Um, I stamp out six clouds, but you're going to see when we get into the card later that I actually cut one of the clouds in half. So you're going to see seven clouds on my card, um, but it's just six clouds, just one I cut in half. I like to work in uneven numbers. I find that they are more visually appealing. So uh, I have six clouds, but it will turn into seven as we get there. So I also have the MFT Rolling Cloud Stencil, and it's not quite big enough for a slimline card. It's, I believe, like 6x6. Six six. So I just uh, kind of turn it because it rolls and just keep going with my clouds, and they line up perfectly. Um, you can stretch most stencils pretty well into a slimline size. And I did use some washi tape for my stash to adhere my panel down to my glass mat because I knew that I was going to consistently be rotating my stencil. So I didn't want to adhere my stencil to any to the to my card. So I just taped the background down and then just rotated my stencil on top. So I also have a blending brush and I have some Distress Oxide ink in tumbled glass and I'm just lightly creating a background. I knew that I wanted the plane to be the focal, the plane and the pig to be my focal point so I just really wanted something in the background that kind of tied in that they were, the plane and the pig were flying through the sky. And I thought this is a really pretty and kind of subtle way to pull it all together. I really only used three colors in this color palette. I have grays, um, blue, like a pastel-y kind of blue, and then pink for the pig. You could, of course, color the pig any color you like. I chose pink just because I like uh, blue and pink together. And then, of course, gray is a neutral, which looks wonderful with most things. But you could absolutely change up the color palette and do some different things here. And there's so many of these really great Avery L. Peekaboo stamps that I'm going to have to get my hands on some more of them. This is just kind of my start into that set of stamps, and I'm really going to have to pick up more. There's some really cute ones. So we're going to jump right into the Copic coloring, and I have sped this up quite a bit in editing. Uh, so you're not going to see, like, I don't color this fast normally. <laughs> I just, <laughs> it would be a pretty long video if you guys had to sit here and watch me color in this the whole time. So for my pinks, I have RV02 and RV13. And the way I generally color is lightest to darkest, darkest to lightest. Now I left this a pretty simple color blend because I really wanted it to look quite pretty and be kind of uh, subtle in its color. 
it's not super subtle. I shouldn't say subtle because the pink is quite vibrant, but I didn't, <laughs> there's not much in the color families here. So we're just kind of being uh, the three color blends and then that's, or the three color families and that's about all I bring into this. So for my blues, I did bring in BG01 and did the outside of the clouds there. And later I'm going to bring in BG000 to kind of lighten up the color a little bit. For my grays, I brought in N1, N3, and N5, and I also brought in N6 for like the propeller on the plane and just a couple of details like uh, the hooves of the little pig and stuff like that. So mostly I'm going to use N1, N3, and N5. And for the plane, I kind of started, I like to lay a wash of my lightest color down, and then I'll come in and add details like shading or shadowing or um, anything that I want to kind of make darker, anything that's in front of another image or anything like that, I like to bring in the darker color. So I did leave some empty space on the plane because I am going to bring in the pink and blue as well, uh, just to kind of tie the colors together and have them be in a few more places. You will see that I end up putting more pink on the plane than I do the blue, simply because there's blue in the background. So there's not much blue on the plane. I believe I do the front three stars in, in the exact same blues that I used um, on the clouds, the BG01 and the BG000. Um, I also bring in the BG000 just to color in the glass uh, on the front of the plane there as well. And then I'm going to bring in the two pinks to do the stripes on the uh, wing and the little, the bigger star in the back. And then that's kind of all of the, the Copa coloring for these images. I didn't want to bring in too many colors because I kind of was trying to appreciate the white space I have going on in the background. So I do own the dies for the Peekaboo Plane set, but I don't own the dies for the pet set. So I did just choose to fussy cut this out with my mini snips. Um, it's a pretty Im simple image to fussy cut, but I wanted to make sure um, of how much of a white border the plane images had before I trimmed it out, just to kind of have the same look that uh, the plane has there. And the <laughs> I did the feet as well. The, it was a bit, because <laughs> they're so small, it was a bit fun to uh, try to trim those out, but I got there. You're going to see me glue them to my finger later because they're so small, but they're super cute and totally tied together the little pig sitting in the plane. I mean, I don't know that you would necessarily see the pig's little hooves just because theoretically he should be driving the plane, but uh, it's just too adorable not to have them included. So I did include them. And you guys can kind of see that I did add a little bit of a, a right hand shadow to my images. There's no real rhyme or reason to how I created the shadows. Just I usually go with what looks good to me. There's no right or wrong way to do that though. So I mean, whatever appeals to you. And then I brought in my Nouveau Deluxe glue and I glued the little pig onto the plane. And here you're gonna see that I, I dropped the, the huff and stick it to my finger. That's okay, I just wiped the, uh, the extra glue off on my glass mat. And I'm gonna stick the other little hoof down and then I'm gonna hold it up so you guys can see how cute this is. Um, I'm just in love with these little images. I'm going to have to pick up some more of the peekaboo set because it's just so cute. And now for a little extra glitter, because I can never resist all the shiny things, I put some Nouveau glue on my little clouds there, kind of just along where the blue met the white, and then I dumped on some rock candy glitter. Uh, it's like a kind of a chunkier glitter. Um, and it just adds a bit of extra bling. And then I set them aside to dry. But I am going to do it for all six of the clouds. And you will see later, I don't show it, but I cut one of the clouds in half. And you'll see it when I go to adhere them onto the background. Now this, the glitter theoretically could try to fall off. Although I haven't had a problem with that. I know some people don't like it. Uh, because it is a loose glitter, but I haven't had any issues with it kind of coming off when you rub it or anything because I try to tap off quite a bit of it before I set it down to even let it dry. So I mean, I haven't had a problem. You could absolutely do this with like stickles or like the glitter gel or anything like that instead of actual loose glitter, but I just think that it adds a lot of um, something extra to the clouds. And I did put my base into my Misty again, just so I could stamp out my sentiment. And the sentiment is from that same Peekaboo Flight stamps. Um, I just thought that this was super cute. And you can see that I'm tipping it up so that I can see how it's lined up to my grid mark, like the grids lines in the Misty. 
to make sure that it's straight because I would hate to stamp it down crooked on the background because I stamped right on the background panel. Uh, so, I mean, there are ways to fix that if you did, so no problem. But, And I did use the Gina K Amalgam Ink. If I had messed up the sentiment, I honestly would have just made it a sentiment strip and I uh, adhered it on top. So there are ways to fix mistakes if you ever make any, so don't ever worry about that. So you can see here I'm going to glue down everything on my background. I've kind of laid it out how I want it to look, and I'm just going to adhere everything down with <coughs> excuse me, that same Nouveau Deluxe glue. And there you can see I cut one of the medium sized clouds in half and I'm just kind of sticking it off, which gives the illusion that there's more going on in the scene than what you see here. Like it kind of gives the illusion that there's something else past what you see, which just gives it a really nice flow. Um, I like to do that. I find that it it kind of looks better to the eye. Again, that's just one of my things. And you can see that then I have seven clouds as opposed to six, which is an uneven number thing, which is something I like to do. But I mean, there's no wrong way to make a card, guys. It's going to be beautiful regardless. And someone's going to love to receive it. So don't ever worry about that. So you see here, I also hung that bottom cloud off of the edge. I am going to come in with my mini snips again and cut some of that off. So <laughs> these are my new love. I love these thin 3D foam squares. Uh, you can see that I put quite a few on the back of my little pig because I wanted to prop him up in his little plane. Um, and I just think that they add a little dimension, but it's not so bulky that it ends up costing more to send it in the mail. So I'm a huge fan of these. I think I order them almost every time I place an order now because I love them so much. And if they ever hang off of your image, sorry, I kind of go out of frame there. If they ever hang off of your image, I just kind of bring in my mini snips and cut on an angle and just remove any foam that's hanging off the edge. And they lift up super easily. Like I've never had, I, I'm so in love with these uh, thin 3D foam squares that I just, I think I've put them on almost every card since I discovered them in the Scrapbook Pal uh, store. So I just, <laughs> they're kind of like my new, my new favorite uh, crafty item. But yeah, so you can see there, I just flip over my card base and I just, or my card panel, and I just kind of trim off anything that was hanging over the edge to that kind of scalloped. So it still curves with the scallop and adds that kind of same look that they had, but there's still clouds there on the edge. So I am going to take my new Vodalux glue and I am going to glue it down on top of that first, other, the second panel that I cut out in the beginning of this video. And it's to add some stability, but it's also to add some texture to the background. Because it has like a dotted line around it. And now this, this base panel is the same size as the full card front. So it's going to cover up the full card. Um, I'm perfectly okay with that. Generally I do leave a border, but I kind of wanted this to be kind of framed by that um, st like stitched edge of that one panel. So that's kind of the look I was going for. You could absolutely just do the lacy one and that would be pretty too. So I'm going to hold it up so you can see it in all its glory and all its glitter. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you'll consider subscribing. This channel has a lot of really amazing creators. And uh, leave us a comment, leave us a like, and I will see you again soon. Thank you so much, guys. Bye-bye.